So to kick today off, we're going to be talking about setting up a cake business. Um, I know a lot of you are thinking about doing this or are nervous to do it or think there's so much involved in doing it. There really isn't. So I'm going to explain to you what you need to do to set up your cake business. So today I'm going to be talking about setting up your cake business. I know some of you are thinking about it and quite daunted by the thought of doing this. It's really not as bad as you think. It doesn't take as long as you think. Um, so I'm going to go step by step what you need to do to set up a cake business. So before you think about anything else, you need to decide what you want to get out of this business. Is it a sideline business? Is it a full time job that you're wanting to pursue or what? What do you want from it? What do you want to get out of it? What would you like to earn? Um, what would you like to provide? What are you going to offer your customers? So basically, you need to manifest what you'd like to happen over the year. What would you like to happen in your business? How much money? All that sort of thing. Write it down. Write it down on a piece of paper. Next thing you need to do is think of a really good business name. Now, obviously, you can call your business whatever you want. It's your choice. It's your business. But try and make it relevant to what you are selling so if you were, for example, just called Twiggies, no one knows that that's a cake company. So try and be quite clear on your branding. Also, make sure your branding screams you. You know, you always see the sort of generic pastel colours for cake makers, which is why it's quite hard sometimes to decipher who's who, etc. So that's why I went out of the box and went completely different colourway. So mine are chocolate brown and copper and black and gold it's actually not black it's like a very deep charcoal so i didn't want to be the same as everybody else i wanted to stand out so make sure your branding reflects you don't go along with what everyone else is doing if you have a company designing your logos you will need to make sure that they give you the eps files the jpeg files and there's another one hold on and the png files these are yours you will need them don't do what I did and get caught out. The lady who I had first designed my logos would not hand these over to me. Even though I paid for them, they were mine, she would not hand them over. So please make sure they hand them over to you. They are your property if you have paid a brand logo designer to design them for you. They're yours. And actually, before you start getting a logo created, make sure there's not a company already with the same name. Because if you later down the line want to have a website or anything like that, you need to check that name is available. You don't want to end up with some trademark copyright problem. So just check that that name is available. If you are going down the website route straight away, which I don't actually recommend, I recommend that you build up your following first, then get a website because they're a big investment. Um, I would recommend that you buy both domains. So if you're in the UK, you buy the .co.uk and you buy the .com. So by both of those domains. So once this is all sorted, you then need to contact your local government. So for the UK, it's obviously .gov.uk and inform them that you are registering your business. You will register as a sole trader, unless of course you, you're self-employed already, then you need to look into that as to whether you need to set up again, but you can probably just add it on to your existing um, employment. Whether you're a sideline business or a full time, they do still need to know. You still need to register yourself as a business. You then need to contact your local council to let them know that you're setting up a business. Um, lucky for us, because we're in the cake industry, we're classed as low risk. So it's not as in-depth the inspections as they would be if you were, say, dealing with raw meat or anything like that. So we're very lucky in that sense that the, to pass and get the five star is very simple. Once the council have been notified, you will be um, contacted for an EHO, which is an environmental health officer, to come out and inspect your kitchen. Please don't panic with this. It's not as bad as you think. If you go again onto the government website, it tells you what you need to put in place. Um, or you can go on my business course and I'll tell you about it all on there, all the things you need to do. Most of it is common sense, to be honest with you. It really is. Um, so don't get panicky. Don't get rid of any pets. You don't need to get rid of animals. You're allowed to have animals in the home. They just can't be there when you're actually baking, as in in the room, not in the house. There are different rules for different countries. So please do your research and check what you need to put into place 
to set up as a cake business if you're overseas. Next thing is to get yourself some insurance. Um, you will need public liability insurance for this. And I also have uh, business contents insurance because obviously by the time you've invested in all your gear and all the products and that you buy, equipment, it does cost, you know, in the end, when you accumulate it over the years, you've got a lot of money's worth of gear in there, your fridge, your freezer, the oven, everything. So make sure that you get good um, insurance. I personally use Simply Business. Um, they're fantastic. If you're planning on delivering your cake products or whatever it is you're selling, you do need to inform your car insurance company. If you have an accident and there are cakes in the car, your insurance will be null and void because you haven't declared that you use it for business purposes. I only paid an extra £10 on my policy to have the business side of it. So it's worth it just for peace of mind, really. You will also need a level two food hygiene certificate. Again, very simple. You do it online. Um, my daughter Alexia has just done it. She's 14. Well, she's 15 now, but she was 40 at the time. I think it was £20 to do it and she did it easily it's just a, again it's really sort of common sense stuff but you do need that for insurance to have the level two food hygiene if funds allow also i would recommend the allergens course that's on there again it's the same money but just get really clued up on allergens um so you know what you're dealing with that's it you're literally ready to rock and roll once you've done that it may sound a lot but you're probably talking an afternoon's work really that's what it took for me to set up mine anyway you need to remember to set up your socials as well. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok if you want to do it, um, Twitter, all of them. Set them all up, same name, same logo, off you go. So now it's time to talk about obviously supplies and what sort of stuff you need. Please don't go mad with this. Do not do what I did and buy every roll of cellophane known to man. I bought every colour, every pattern, all sorts. You don't need them. You need one roll of cellophane. If, if you're going down the cupcake bouquet route, this is. You don't need 20 different ones. Just buy one. Try and keep your cost to a minimum. Same with the tissue paper. You don't need 50 different colours. I use the natural acid-free tissue paper for all of my cupcake bouquets. It goes with all of them. It's more realistic as well. So that's what I use for that. I get that from Amazon, that one. And I use olive green tissues, obviously, to line the cups to put the flowers in so i have the natural the olive green that's it that's all i stock and then bows wise you don't need 20 different colors of bows just buy the sage green again all bouquets have greenery in them so use the green so you don't need to invest tons on supplies one thing i would highly recommend is a stand mixer you do not need to buy a kitchen aid hasn't got to be a four five six seven hundred pound mixer you can buy really cheap ones that do the same job but it'll just save your wrists, that's all. That's all the only reason I'm recommending one of those. I don't actually use stand mixers to make my cupcakes. I use a hand mixer for that. And for that, I use a Jurlit one. Um, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Because I like to sort of feel the mixture. I don't feel like you can do that when it's in a um, stand mixer. But for buttercream, I absolutely use a stand mixer. Only buy the nozzles that are relevant to the flowers you are learning. There's so many students I know that before they've even started, they've bought a load of nozzles. They don't know what they do, they, but some of them don't even have numbers. So I can't even tell them what they can do because I can't tell from a picture. So only buy the nozzles that are, you have learnt for flowers or you might already have some anyway. So don't go crazy on nozzles. You don't need, again, every nozzle known to man. Again, you'll only need one set of gel colours. You don't need, again, every colour. Because you could be amazed how many you can mix together to make different colours as well. You don't need to go crazy on that. If you're just starting out, you'd only need a few spatulas, a couple of palette knives, a few bowls, a pair of scissors and a sellotape dispenser. That's pretty much it. Don't go crazy again. You can build your stock up over time. The busier and busier you get, the more you can buy multiples of things. But to start with, there does not need to be a massive investment. If you've purchased any of my online flower tutorials, say for example, the beginner's bundle, which is £99 here in the UK, you need to look at your return on investment. If you've spent £99 learning 13 flowers and how to wrap and assemble bouquet, you could earn that money back by piping two bouquets. That's how you need to look at it. I also have loads of free content, remember, on YouTube, everywhere. Got loads of free content. Um... So try and look at that when you're looking at courses, whether it's me or someone else you're learning from. It's a return on investment.
This one bit of advice is essential um, when you're running your own business. Your terms and conditions. You need to have terms and conditions in place. If you don't, you could be in trouble, basically. Because, not in trouble, that's real exaggeration. Customers have got one over on you if you do not have terms and conditions in place. They can turn around and say, I didn't like it, and then want their money back, and you've got no leg to stand on. You need to have terms and conditions. I have a terms and conditions template available on my website. Um, you fill in your details, but it's really tight. I am covered. My butt is covered on every angle. Because who's to say anything could happen? You know, um, they might not turn up. What do you do about the money? You know, things like that. If they're messing you around. It's important to have terms and conditions. If you're wondering how you're going to price your work, I have a free PDF download on my website on pricing. There's loads of free stuff on my website, so please do go and have a look. Um, but please remember, my pricing is for my area and my country. So you need to do your research in your area of what people charge. But remember, you are appealing to the gift market, not the cake market. It's very different. I think I've covered absolutely everything. Um, Obviously, you'll need to do your research into um, sourcing ingredients. You'll find your cheapest somewhere, whether it's worth, you know, you go into a cash and carry or a bookers that we have here saying um, or Costco here in the UK. But sometimes it isn't cheap for me. It isn't cheaper to do that because the cost is like well over an hour away, hour and hour and a half away for me. So it's not worth it. So it's actually cheap for me to go to my local shop and get it from there. Um but yeah, do your research with the ingredients. Make sure they're quality ingredients. So you don't want to go cheap, cheap, because obviously that's, you're not then offering a high quality product, are you? So I hope this has helped you. Now there are a few do's and don'ts that I highly recommend. Um, when you're set up and you're ready to go and you've got orders started coming in, there's one thing I can't stress enough is really, really important. And that is to not take deposits. These orders aren't big enough for deposits. It's also a waste of time it's admin it's eating into your time that is totally unnecessary i take full payment upon ordering or the order does not go in my diary so say for example if the customer sent you a deposit in or you hope they have you then have to go and check your bank to see if they've put the deposit in if they haven't you then got to chase them and then possibly chase them again then the deposit goes in then it comes to them paying the balance you've got to chase them have they paid it in what if they don't pay it in? What do you do? It's not worth the hassle. When you're dealing with big cakes, as in like wedding cakes that are six, seven, eight hundred pounds, yes, I completely get deposits. Totally understand. But when you're dealing with 25 to say 100 pounds for a bouquet, it is not worth doing the deposits. Ask for full payment upon ordering. You added up all the admin involved in chasing that 25 pounds order, um for the money then you've lost all your money in admin fees basically so you need to you know consider that so please just from the off ask for money up front you have to remember when you're self-employed time is money when it comes to customers collecting if they are collecting from you remember this is your business so you stipulate when these collection times are please don't leave it open-ended like i used to right at the beginning I say, yeah, I'm in from nine till three or something like that. And then they'd literally leave it to five to three or just gone three before they turn up. Have a specific time that your customer is picking this order up. So I always have a 10 a.m. or a 5 p.m. That's all I offer. So even if I've got three people, they will all be picking up at 10 o'clock. Um, and just as a gentle reminder for them to turn up on time, I drop them a text the night before saying, just to confirm your appointment at 10 a.m. tomorrow, prompt to collect your cupcake bouquet. That way you're sort of giving them the nudge as in you better turn up on time. Please remember it's your business and you dictate what happens. And to never say to a customer, is that okay? At the end, because you're questioning yourself, aren't you? You know, if you send them a picture of the bouquet or whatever and you say, is that okay? You're sort of doubting yourself. You don't need to send them a picture of the bouquet. They've asked for something, they can collect it and you will produce what they ask for. Um, when it comes to certain colours that people are wanting, if they want a specific colour, I would recommend you get the customer to send you a picture or a photo or something with that tone of colour that they would like. 
because my interpretation of lilac is not what someone else's is. My interpretation of lilac is like a very pale purple. For others, it's pink. So just to be clear, get them to send a photo or even if they've got a swatch of material, anything, so you can colour match. It very rarely happens, but if you do get a customer that complains, some are serial complainers and you'll find that um, they do that just to get their money back. But if you've got your terms and conditions in place, like I've told you, then they have to have bought back that order for you to examine it and see what the problem was. You know, if they're saying they're too dry, you need to taste that they're too dry. If they've eaten it all and said it was so dry, I want my money back. Well, no, because you haven't bought the product back to me for me to check it and inspect it to see what the issue is. So please, please have terms and conditions in place. When it comes to taking orders, only take on what you know you can handle. Don't stress yourself out. You can build this up over time. When you first start out, it does feel like it takes hours to do one bouquet or floral cupcakes, whatever you're doing, but you do get quicker. The more you do, the quicker you become. My first one literally took me four hours and it was only a seven bouquet and it was very simple. Um, but now I can do them in 15 minutes start to finish. That's piping to wrapping. So only take on what you know you can handle. Don't put yourself under pressure. Prep is absolutely key in this business. Um, I don't work Mondays. Mondays are my prep day. I do all of my baking, all of my buttercream making, all the same day so that I'm ready for the week. You can freeze your cupcakes and you can make your buttercream way ahead of time. You've got to remember the buttercream will last in the fridge for as long as the expiry date on the pack of butter. So that's how long it will stay in the fridge, in a container with a lid on. With the cupcakes, obviously you can freeze them. I use freezer bags personally, but I've got a whole other blog on that which you can look at on my website where I explain storage and how to freeze etc etc. You can even assemble loads of bouquet structures, get them all set up, get a load of random ones set up, you know, I don't know, five sevens and five twelves or something so that the structure is there ready. You can cut your cellophane, you can make the boxes up, you can pull the bows, you can do your labelling, all that sort of thing you can do ahead of time. So all you've got to do on that day is pipe. You can get so prepped for the week it's untrue um, and like I said prep is key here but that's about it um, anyone can do this I know I say it all the time but they can I'm not qualified in any way shape or form in baking or cake decorating I'm actually a qualified beauty therapist nothing to do with baking so anyone can do this you just need to put the time in for practice put all the things I've said into place it'll be a breeze